Krishna Dasa Kaviraja Gosvami, in describing the branches of the main trunk, Natyananda, of the tree nurtured by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, praised Gauri Dasa Pandita in this way. Gauri Das Pandit's loving devotion was very intense and powerful. He especially empowered himself to deliver, as well as to receive, love of Krishna. He completely surrendered himself along with his caste distinction and his religious dictates at the lotus feet of Natyananda Prabhu. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Natyananda Prabhu were the lords of his life. C. C. Adi 11.26-27, his father's name was Sri Kamsari Misra and his mother's name Sri Kamala Devi. Together they had six sons. Damodara, Jagannatha, Surya Dasa, Gauri Dasa, Krishna Dasa and Anarsima Chaitanya. Amongst twelve cowherd boys in Vraja, Gauri Dasa was Subal Saka. Across the Ganges from Santapur, in a small town called Ambika Kalna, which is within the present district of Bardama, is where Gauri Dasa Pandita's temple is located. His worshipable deities Sri Sri Gora Nityananda are still residing in all their splendor there. There is a railway station at Ambika Kalna on the Howrah Nivadvipa line. From there one can proceed by rickshaw to Mahaprabhu Mandira. In the temple is an old copy of the Bhagavad Gita on palm leaves which is supposed to have been written by the hand of Mahaprabhu himself. There is also an oar from a boat which has an interesting story behind. It. One day, the two lords Chaitanya and Nityananda came to Kalna from Santapur by boat, paddling it themselves. Lord Chaitanya kept the oar in his hand, and when he entered Gauri Das's house he gave it to him, saying, With this you should cross over the ocean of material existence, taking all the living entities with you. Gauri Dasa Pandita's older brother, Surya Dasa Sarakali, had two daughters, Sri Vasuda and Janava Devi. He gave them in marriage to Natyananda Prabhu. Near the conclusion of his Navadvipa pastimes, when Mahaprabhu desired to accept sannyasa, he came to Kalna to bid farewell to Gauri Dasa. At that time Gauri Dasa became extremely afflicted by separation. Hereafter is a nice song which describes what occurred at that time. In the Thakur Pandit's house, Lord Gauranga was dancing ecstatically, revolving around and around, while Lord Natyananda chanted, Hari, Hari. Gauri Dasa, however, was crying very piteously and incessantly. He fell at the Lord's feet and begged him, Please don't ever go away from here. Just honor this one request. Stay here in Ambikanagar. This is my last submission at your lotus feet. If you go away, surely I'll die. Don't try to trick me like you did the gopis, giving some high philosophy about your Bhava Murti, or anything like that. I must keep you here in such a way that I can see you. You two brothers just stay here with me, thus everyone will become liberated. Again I am petitioning you, don't leave me, Gaur Hari, what's that mean exactly? Then I'll know that you are the deliverers of the fallen. Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu replied, Gauri Dasa, give up this idea. You can just serve my deity form, for I am personally present in that form also. You should know this to be a fact. Just accept what I am telling you as the truth. Hearing this, Gauri Dasa simply let out a deep sigh and continued to cry piteously. Again the two brothers tried to console him but his heart refused to be pacified. Dina Krishna Dasa is praying at the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, that these two brothers might remain there. Thus the two of them were bound by the love of Gauri Dasa and therefore the Lord is known as Bhakta Vatsala or one who is affectionate to his devotees. Seeing that Gauri Dasa was extremely distraught, Mahaprabhu spoke to him very gently, All right, we'll stay with you. Know in all certainty that we two brothers will stay in your house. Consoling him in this way the two lords came before him in the company of two deities. Seeing the four of them standing before him, Panditji was astonished, and though tears continued to flow from his eyes, now it was not out of sadness. The Lord again spoke to him, Whichever two you choose, you can keep in your room. Whichever two you can recognize as us will stay with you and depend on you to feed us. No, this to be the truth of truths within your heart. Having heard Mahaprabhu speak these words, Gauri Dasa immediately began to cook. 
he fed all four of them sumptuously and then offered them nice cloths and garlanded them with garlands of lotus flowers. Then he offered pan and batal nuts for chewing and smeared sandalwood paste on their bodies. By serving them in various ways, he gradually regained his former composure and at the same time decided which two he would keep in his house. Due to the Pandita's pure love, two lords remained with him and asked him to feed them when they were hungry, while the other two went to Nilakala Puri. Gauri Dasa Pandita served his two lords according to their whims and enjoyed many pastimes with them, praying at the lotus feet of such a rare devotee as Pandita Gauri Das, Dina Krishna Dasa concludes his song. Becoming subservient to Gauri Dasa, love, Sri Sri Gaur Nityananda accepted the Akka Vigraha form and remained with him to enjoy sporting pastimes. One day the two lords smilingly spoke to Pandit G. Gauri Dasa. Previously you were our friend, Subal. Don't you remember how we used to play and frolic, enjoying different pastimes on the banks of the Yamuna? Speaking in this sweet way, suddenly they took the form of Krishna and Balarama. Dressed like cowherd boys, they held buffalo horn, cane and flute in their hands. Their heads were decorated with peacock feathers and around their necks were garlands of forest flowers, and their lotus feet were decorated with ankle bells. Gauri Dasa also assumed his previous appearance and in this way they enjoyed some fun together. After some time, Gauri Dasa calmed himself, and the two lords again sat down on the Simhasana. Every day, Gauri Dasa used to cook many varieties of vegetables and offer them to their lordships. He was always absorbed in their service and never perceived his own bodily discomfort. As the years went by, gradually he attained a ripe old age. Nevertheless he continued to serve his lordships as before, cooking many various preparations for them. Seeing that he was having to exert himself so much to do so much cooking, one day Sri Sri Gora Nityananda feigned anger and refused to eat. Pandit Ji was in turn hurt by this and said, if you get happiness by not eating, then why do you have me cook in the first place? After saying this he became silent. Lord Gauranga smiled and replied softly, your cooking is no small accomplishment. You prepare rice and so many varieties of vegetables. You won't listen if we request you not to make so much. But we can't bear to see your hard labor. Whatever you can prepare easily that would be best. Hearing their statement, Gauri Dasa replied, Anyway, whatever I have prepared today, please accept that. From tomorrow I won't feed you with so many preparations. I'll just put some sack on your plate. Having heard the reply of Gauri Dasa, the two lords laughed and began to eat. Sometimes Gauri Dasa desired to decorate their lordships with ornaments. Coming to know of this, Sri Gora Nityananda put on various ornaments and exhibited themselves in their full opulence. When Pandit Ji entered the temple, he smiled with wonder. Where did so many ornaments come from? He was simply astonished in ecstasy. In this way Sri Sri Gora Nityananda began to manifest their opulence through various sporting pastimes in Gauri Dasa's house. Gauri Dasa's dearmost disciple was Sri Hridayananda. One time, on the occasion of Lord Gorsundara's birth anniversary, Gauri Dasa went to visit some of his disciples. At the time of going he left Hridayananda in charge of worshipping the deities, which Hridayananda began to do in full love. Gradually the appearance day of Mahaprabhu drew very near. When there were only three days remaining, still Gauri Dasa hadn't returned home yet. Hridayananda deliberated for some time about what should be done and finally, being prompted on his own, sent out invitations to all the devotees and disciples to attend the festival. Just after that, Gauri Dasa returned. Hridayananda informed his Gurudeva that he had written out invitations and had then sent them to the devotees. Within himself, Gauri Dasa was very pleased by Hridayananda's service, but externally he feigned great anger and said, Even in my presence you show so much independence, sending out invitations. Hither and thither. Anyway, whatever this upstart has done is done, but he won't be able to remain here. Hearing this, Hridayananda offered his obeisances and went to sit underneath a tree on the banks of the Ganga. Shortly thereafter, a rich man passing by in a boat hailed Hridayananda, 
wishing to make a donation. But instead of accepting the donation himself, her Dayananda sent him to his guru. However, Gauri Dasa sent the man back to her Dayananda and told him to accept the donation and with it to hold a festival on the banks of the Ganga. As per the order of his guru, her Dayananda began to make the necessary preparations. Gradually, the people that he had sent invitations to began to arrive, but upon hearing that a festival was being held on the Ganges riverbank, they proceeded there first. In the company of the many devotees, her Dayananda chanted and dance ecstatically. The Sankirtan was so blissful and attractive that their lordships themselves, Sri Sri Gora Nityananda, came to take part in the dancing and singing. Her Dayananda was very fortunate to see all of this. Meanwhile, Gauri Dasa was also holding a festival in his house. When the time came for making an offering, the Pujari, Boro Ganga Dasa Pandita entered the deity room only to find that there were no deities. He immediately informed Gauri Dasa. Gauri Dasa could understand the matter very well and, smiling, he picked up a stick and proceeded towards the Kirtana festival on the banks of the Ganges. Arriving there, he saw the two transcendental brothers engaged in ecstatic dancing. Sri Sri Gora Nityananda also saw Gauri Dasa approaching in an angry mood with a stick in his hand, and they quickly and silently entered the temple of her Dayananda's heart. Seeing this Gauri Das couldn't restrain his tears of ecstasy. He forgot his anger and ran towards her Dayananda with his arms outstretched. Firmly embracing him he said, You are so fortunate. From today your name is her day Kaitanya. Gauri Dasa began to bathe him with his tears as her day Kaitanya fell at his lotus feet. Then Gauri Dasa took her day Kaitanya and all of the devotees to his courtyard where intense chanting and dancing continued. The assembled Vaishnavas filled the day with the vibrations of Hari. Hari. In this way the birth anniversary celebration of Gorsundara was observed. Thereafter Gauri Dasa appointed her day Kaitanya as the Sevaka of the deities. His disappearance is on the thirteenth day of the bright fortnight of the month of Srivana. In Vrindavana, on the banks of the Yamuna, there is a place called Dur Samir. Gauri Dasa Pandita's Samadhi is located here as are his worshipable deities, Shri Shri.